New World is probably one of the most explosive games that has come out in the last couple of years. And by explosive, I mean they absolutely obliterated their reputation to the large majority of gamers. After about the first two weeks, the game really just started going downhill with a ton of bugs, exploits, the end game was just not really exactly developed at the time, and there just wasn't really that much to do once you hit level 60 and kind of farmed up your gear score and whatnot. For myself, I was able to enjoy the first week of the game, and then unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I had to go do some stuff so I was never able to touch the game again. And with the expansion coming out in October 3rd, I wanted to go ahead and actually get that full new player experience and see exactly what New World is like in 2023 before the release of what's hopefully going to be the beginning of their turnaround. And I know some of you want to say that Brimstone Sands was a big turnaround point, but we will talk about that later. Before we get into any type of review, I just want to put out there some biases that I myself might personally have. When it comes to MMORPGs, I generally lean more towards the PvE aspects. I really enjoyed New World for the crafting and the gathering aspects of the game. And I know the large majority of people generally don't in, like they don't go out of their way looking for a game where they can smack down trees all day. So for someone like myself that's not exactly like super PvP oriented, I might have some bias towards the game because I do enjoy the crafting and the gathering. When we talk about PvP later, it's going to be mostly based off topics that I found on the subreddit for New World, as well as just the general discussion in global chat, and then just talking to other players that primarily like to play PvP in the game that I was able to talk to. I previously only had about a week's worth of gameplay, I hit around level 40, and I mostly spent the majority of my time doing gathering and things like that. These last weeks, I've spent a lot of time actually going out of my way to just do questing, do dungeons, do some of the player raids, as well as just the overarching things that are happening in the world right now, so like portal runs, chest runs, as well as egg, basically the Siege of Sulphur. So without further ado, let's just get into it. New world, you get placed in this <laughs> new world called the Turnum, and basically you're kind of like fighting against corruption, but corruption is also saying that you're the problem. It's one of those things where it's like, oh look, I'm not really the problem, it's really the, the people that are living here that are the problem, they're ruining the world, that type of, you know, trope basically. But the world itself, I have to say that New World is graphically one of my favorite MMOs that I've ever played, and just games in general. I really like the art style that they went with. I felt like all of the biomes and all of the areas on the map are extremely unique. And while you might see a lot of the similar mobs in different areas, I do feel like the flora and the fauna themselves are very unique and just really nice to look at. I love the bright colors. I enjoy the lighting that this game has. And the day-night cycle is just really, really enjoyable. So graphically, for me, I feel like this is one of my favorite games. And this includes boss fights too. They have some really fantastic boss fights. Maybe the mechanics themselves aren't like the most insane thing in the world, but how everything looks while you're in the boss fight is really fantastic. This also includes your character with the new transmog system that I'll talk about a little bit later. And just the gear in general, I think that your character looks pretty fantastic. They have a pretty alright die system with a lot of the really nice dies kind of locked behind paywalls. But the base gear, I think, looks really fun and also just funny. As you're leveling up, you'll run into where you're just kind of equipping the best next item. And as you level up and do quests, you know, you're going to get a ton of materials, a ton of different items, a lot of gear. And so you'll have like four different sets on basically at the same time. And you'll end up looking pretty stupid. But to me, it's in a good way. You look dumb, but it's funny. And it kind of gives you a glimpse at like what possibly this full armor set might look like if you actually collected everything. When it comes to the stories, the general just like quest system is pretty straightforward. I feel like in the beginning of the game, it's a lot of just like go here, do this, kill X enemies, search, you know, for this in like these crates and stuff like that. So nothing like too unique in regards to the types of quests that you're going to do. The storyline itself is pretty generic, you know, like you're here figuring out what the corruption's doing, why why is the corruption so terrible, the corruption is also talking to you, telling you like, oh, you know, I'm not really the problem, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, without going into too much detail, because I want you guys to kind of play it yourself if you're going to, the storyline is pretty straightforward and very enjoyable. The quests do get a little bit better the later you go into the game. There's some more unique quests. I personally myself never did any of the like, not exactly legendary quests, but they're the quests that have the like three prong indicator as opposed to just the normal diamond. And these are a little bit more unique where you'll go and like collect items to build a specific weapon or like go collect gear to make a legendary armor set and stuff like that. They have more like 
side story that I think is really enjoyable to kind of throw in some flavor into the world. And I do think that some games kind of just ignore the side quests and just give you some like generic, you know, while you're doing the main story quest in this area, also do this. And these quests in particular, they just add something that I think is really nice to the game. Questing in the later areas like Brimstone Sands, definitely very enjoyable. They add like puzzles. There's like jump puzzles, which I absolutely hated. While I do think that the climbing like mechanics in this game are pretty great and you can kind of do some really funny things at the same time. Man, was I missing a lot of jumps, and I had to redo things so often. Getting into the meat and potatoes of it, there are four trade skills that you're going to kind of go over, and this is just the overarching trade skill. There's more trade skills within these, but the four are crafting, refining, gathering, and casual. So casual is just music. You're able to play music, and you can give buffs to people. It's a pretty fun little mini game that I think does add just like some random thing for you to do. Crafting obviously goes to, you know, making materials and putting them all together into either weapons, into tools, into armor and things of that nature. Gathering and refining go together. Gathering is obviously just finding things in the overworld, whether it's mining, whether it's wood cutting, whether it's gathering and just picking it all up, putting it in your bags and having a great time. For me, gathering, refining, crafting, this is like my bread and butter. I love going out, gathering materials. I know for some people, and the majority of people, it's just like their least favorite part. So I feel like I'm able to fill a pretty nice, you know, spot in the marketplace to just actually enjoy going out and hitting a tree for three hours and then selling it all in the marketplace. They have a pretty simple leveling system when it comes to these trade skills. It goes from 0 to 200, and in the expansion, we're going to be going to 250. For all of the gathering, you'll have different tools that you're going to need to actually gather these things. You got a pickaxe, you got a hatchet. You have a skinning knife and you have a harvesting sickle. You also have a fishing pool because fishing is always great. I do I do think that fishing in this game is pretty fantastic. And you'll use these tools and level all of these trade skills up. Through these trade skills, you'll be able to unlock higher tier tools. And they're just going to increase your gathering basically speed as well as increase like luck of getting rare materials while you're gathering. And there's a couple other buffs that you can get on these tools that are pretty fun. Now when it comes to combat, there are a lot of different weapons that you're able to play and they kind of all go around a couple different stats and depending on what stats you kind of want to go into or actually which weapons you want to use, you're going to put your stats into those skills to increase the damage that you do with each weapon. There's things that range from sword and shield, you have spears, bows, muskets, blunderbuss, which is like a shotgun, void gauntlet, ice gauntlet, fire staff, life staff, great hammer, great axe, and everyone's favorite, the great sword. I have to say that the great sword is a fantastic weapon and it seems to be everyone's favorite at this moment. It definitely has a very enjoyable playstyle. For myself, I'm going bow spear right now, so it's mostly a dexterity build. And I've enjoyed actually using the bow. It's a little bit slower of a playstyle, but it lets you kind of do things in a different way than just kind of running in there and smacking shit. But if you're into that, just go for it. You'll have a lot of different gear slots, so you know, just your generic armor slots, as well as earrings, amulets, and rings. You'll have three bag slots that you'll unlock as you level up with the last one being level 45 and that's just going to increase your bag space. And then unique to New World there are heart runes. Heart runes are basically like your ultimate ability somewhat for your character. They're not bound by weapon and they can kind of be used however you want to. Some of them do you know a lot of damage while others are like kind of practical and kind of help you like snare things, maybe CC things, debuffs, things of that nature. And you'll get that while doing quests, basically. Heart runes, I believe, were added in the Brimstone Sand spot when that was released. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the quest line was in the Brimstone Sands area. So, most likely, it was released when Brimstone Sands dropped. And they're a pretty nifty little addition to the game. You'll have all of your tool slots. You'll have all of your instrument slots, which are pretty funny. And then you'll have two weapon slots. So, you're able to have a primary and a secondary weapon. Doesn't matter which one you put in which slot. They both, you know, deal the same amount of damage. There's no buffs or debuffs regardless of which slot they're in. You're just basically able to go back and forth between them. So normally you'll put two weapons together that use either the same stat to level up and like deal increased damage. Or maybe you'll just do two weapons that kind of work very well together. That are the best for your playstyle. Combat for the first, you know, I would say 90% of the game was pretty straightforward with not how, you know, a lot of thought to it. You would kind of go in smack stuff, things generally didn't deal enough damage to actually kill you, and unless you like aggroed a bajillion mobs, you're, you're generally pretty safe when it came to 
actually kind of killing everything, doing quests and leveling up. As we got later into the game, the dungeons were a little bit more difficult, but the lower level dungeons, it's kind of hard to find a party that isn't just kind of looking for transmogs. What I mean by that is there's level 60s or just high level players that are looking for specific gear because they like the way it looks. And so you're able to join those parties and they'll just kind of run you through the early level dungeons. So you don't have to worry too much about those. Once you hit level 60, however, and even just like the last levels of 50 while you're doing questing, you'll actually run into a lot of things where you have to put a little bit more thought into what's actually going on, dodging and your stats and things of that nature. A lot of the world events like the Siege of Sulphur and the portals are pretty fun when you have a big group of people. There's raid parties now, which is really nice. You're able to add like up to 20 players, I believe into a little raid party which makes kind of playing together really easy and keeping track of where the whole group is going granted the chat actually does a really good job of making sure that you're going in a specific order to the right events basically the current most difficult boss is worm i was not able to get to that content basically in the amount of time that i played but it is currently the hardest boss and it is a 20 player raid so that's pretty fun there were a lot of people talking about it in world chat and Right now, people are kind of farming up worm or just buying weapons and stuff to get their gear score up, but it's not really super important because with the introduction of the expansion, gear score is going to be going up, and they're changing a bunch of systems to basically make it easier for you to actually get new gear. The one negative I would say is that movement in this game is not exactly terrible, but it's very un just natural. I feel like there's like a constant desync of some sort when it comes to fighting, You'll hit things and they won't actually take damage or you might dodge and then you'll end up like four spaces away from where you were. You might like fall off something. Any elevation while you're fighting is a pain because it's really going to hinder like actually hitting something or even dodging. And then just the generic movement is really odd looking. There is no sprint in this game. You're always going one speed and it looks like you're going quickly, but you're really not going much faster than like a fast walk. But you're in like a full sprint animation when you're moving and it just looks kind of wonky. It didn't really bother me too much and with mounts coming in, it'll probably just matter even less. But hopefully they're able to fix the combat up a little bit with this next expansion because the higher end and like the more effort that you put into it, the more thought you put into the combat, the more frustrated I could see players being and I bet PvP is a little bit worse. Now, speaking of PvP, there's currently four and a half I'll say types of PvP that you're able to play and like I said earlier I'm not really the biggest PvP player so a lot of this is pulled from reddit conversations that had a lot of like comments updates stuff like that myself just talking to players in the game and then paying attention to global chat because there's been a lot of talk about the expansion and what it's going to be doing and how it might have an impact in PvP so the modes are arena outpost rush war there's open world flagging and then I'm not sure where you would throw dueling in between there. They're just one-on-ones basically that happen in the open world. There's a pretty simple flagging system that you're able to use whenever you go to one of the main like points of interest. So like towns, forts, things of that nature. You're able to either turn your PVP flag on or off. And if you have it on, there's some benefits. I think you get additional EXP when you're like gathering and doing quests and stuff like that. It's nothing crazy. I think it's five to 10%. There are 3v3 arenas that you can pretty much just pub into if you want to. There's also, you know, groups of dedicated players that do enjoy the arenas. Outpost Rush is 20v20. That kind of has a combination of PvP and PvE. You have to capture the other team's outposts. And it's basically just capture the flag. If you hold on to an outpost, you get buffs. And as you hold on to these outposts, you get points. And whoever gets a thousand points first wins. And then lastly, there are wars. Wars are 50v50. Kind of one of the main features of the game because it centers around that whole faction system. Companies are able to own territories and if you want to try and take over that territory from another company, you can challenge them to a war once you get the faction influence to a low enough level basically. War consists of capturing three rally points, breaking the fort gates, and taking the final capture point if you're on the attacking side. And if you're a defender, you have to hold out for 30 minutes and not give up at least the last point. In this war, there's a couple like auxiliary kind of, not weapons, but things that might give buffs or deal extra damage like cannons, repeaters, a fire dropper that, you know, drops fire on people. And if you're able to hold out, you know, you get to keep your territory. Otherwise, if the attacking team wins, they will be taking over your territory. 
Now, it doesn't seem like that within the last two years that the game has been out, that there have really been too many changes to PvP. And I would say it does seem like the large majority of players that are still playing the game, a lot of them are really interested in PvP and are pretty disappointed that there hasn't been a lot of updates or, you know, additional arenas and things of that nature when it comes to PvP. It does seem, however, that there are a lot of players that are somewhat optimistic to the changes that are being made with both gear score as well as some changes to territory influence that will hopefully have a positive impact on PvP. And it seems like if they were just to release, you know, like one or two OPR maps, which is the Outpost Rush, a large majority of the players would be happy. This definitely seems to be one of the most talked about things when it comes to PvP, is that the fact that since the beginning of the game, they're still playing on the same map for Outpost Rush, which definitely seems to be the most enjoyable game mode, as wars seem to be kind of... Not exactly dull, but it seems to be the same 100 to 200 players. And arenas seem to be pretty enjoyable, but either you get stomped or you stomp the other team. Now, let's just talk about the community. For myself personally, playing an MMORPG, I feel like it's pretty important to actually have players that are interacting with each other. And right off the bat, New World seemed like it was going to be one of those games where you have to interact with a lot of players just due to the faction system, wars, open world PvP which is optional, and just the large amount of resources that you're going to have to gather to kind of craft whatever it is that you want. And while the game doesn't have the most insane numbers and the servers are capped at 2,500 players, for myself playing on Marama Mama, Ma, you know, the good server that the bald man's from, which is one of the most populated servers, if not the most populated, there seemed to be a pretty nice community in the world. I will say that there's obviously, you know, the people that are still playing the game are a lot of people that have been playing the game since release, and they kind of all know each other. So you'll get a kick out of Global. There's a lot of people that are kind of just having conversations that you'll have no idea about. But as I started to play, you know, kind of got into it for a couple weeks, it wasn't too difficult to kind of like mesh with Global Chat, basically. As I was playing, I ran into a lot of really nice people that were more than willing to help me out, whether that was kind of going through dungeons with me, giving me advice on what might be the next best step for me, like whether that's doing quests, maybe focusing on skills and stuff like that. And sometimes I just ran into people that, you know, wanted to jam out, play some music, go fishing. So I, I do feel like even though the servers aren't as populated or nowhere close to as populated as this game was, when the numbers were very high, it was still really fun playing with people. While I will say Global definitely still has its kinks and there's a lot of people that are just kind of throwing out random trolls and just some random nonsense a lot of the times. If you don't take it too seriously, it is very fun. I ended up joining the Covenant, and unfortunately we got absolutely obliterated after about two weeks of me playing on the server. And it doesn't really impact me that much because I don't really do too many PvP things. But it was really fun seeing everyone make fun of Yellow, and basically saying that they don't exist. Which for a portion of the time I was playing, we did not own anything. The server itself though did feel full, I mean when you went and did the Siege of Sulphur events, which you know just everyone spamming X egg and the recruitment chat, it was very easy to find 20 plus people going around and doing the world events. Same thing with different dungeons and different expeditions, it was not hard to find a group of people to do any of the end game content. When it came to content in the middle of the game, like the lower than level 60 stuff, it was a little bit difficult to run into players that were the same level as you. A lot of the time you would run into people that were level 60 farming for transmogs. And I think that kind of takes away from the experience because you didn't get to like really have too much of an impact on your dungeon run because this level 60 is going through and just obliterating everything. You really only do a couple of under level 60 dungeons. So I don't really think it takes away from that dungeon experience because there's a lot of in-game content past level 60 that's enjoyable and really fun to do with other players. Now, before we talk about the expansion a little bit, just kind of want to touch on what I feel like the state of the game is. The game itself is in a very weird kind of spot. We're still sitting in around like, you know, 12 to 15,000 players on average every day. And everyone seems to be in this get ready for the expansion mode where the market is kind of all over the place. There's not really a huge reason to do a lot of content because with the new gear dropping and the changes to expertise, they're getting rid of expertise, which is basically the system to get your gear score up and it kind of made it more difficult to get gear. There's not really a ton of reasons to actually do all of that end game content outside of getting transmogs or farming for trophies. So if you're the type of player that kind of enjoys going out and doing all the gathering, all the resource harvesting, 
it might be a good time for you to be playing because a lot of people are just stacking up on the high tier materials so that when this expansion comes out they're able to immediately make the newest tools if they're going to be releasing new tools which i'm assuming they're going to since trade skills are going up to 250. So they're going to be able to power level all those trade skills as well as craft gear that has a higher gear score for them immediately once the x pack starts so if you want to make a decent amount of money now is a pretty good time if you want to come back and you're a returning player that maybe has a level 60 and you just want to kind of reorganize your gear all of your materials i would say for maybe a brand new player or maybe someone that didn't reach level 60 you can just hop on really quickly if you already plan on buying the expansion because you're going to have to buy the game anyways and probably power level yourself up pretty quickly. That way you're able to enjoy the expansion immediately as it comes out. But you might just be better off waiting for the expansion so that you can play with hopefully a large amount of new players to the game that are also going through that new player experience just like you. Really quickly to touch on the store that they have in the game, there are cosmetics that you're able to buy with real life currency and there's also boosts that you're able to buy with real life currency these boosts kind of revolve around leveling up your weapons leveling up your gathering leveling up the amount of materials that you actually gather while you're gathering it gives you a little boost you get a little bit more of a harvest and then a season exp boost and you're able to buy all of these for about five dollars they don't just last indefinitely they are time based and I feel like the reason why it's not really that big of a deal is because a large majority of the people that are still playing the game have already 100% maxed out all of those things, so it's not really that big of a deal. If someone who's never played the game before pays $5 to catch up to where everybody else is, really. So I don't really have too big of an opinion on this. I don't really think it's that big of a deal since the game's been out for so long. And if anyone that is still playing it isn't maxed out, I would be very surprised. They do have this fantastic transmog system that I think is really nice because even if you don't really have like transmog tokens, you can at least see the different type of transmogs that you can find in the world if it's not, you know, purchase only. And I think that's extremely nice because you're just able to kind of get an idea of what you might be able to find doing different dungeons and different missions and killing different mobs around the world. You can always go on New World Database to kind of figure out where those things drop and between the two. I think it's a nice little teaser for people that maybe haven't played the game too much because you're able to see all these really cool items, weapons, armor, and kind of plan out maybe what you want to look like in the future. Transmog tokens you are able to purchase from the store. These are about $5 each as well. And this is basically how you unlock those skins indefinitely. As you find gear and items around the world, you're actually adding all of these into your transmog catalog, basically we'll call it. And as you get a transmog token, you're able to unlock that transmog as a skin that you can apply to any type of item that is of the same type indefinitely once you unlock it. The way you get these transmog tokens is either by purchasing them, which is obviously the quickest way or you're able to unlock transmog tokens through the season pass which is basically like a battle pass and you also get one weekly by doing elite missions or dungeons so i would say if you don't want to put any money into it you can at least farm a full set of transmog slowly over time and for me personally i do feel like a lot of the gear looks pretty funny and nice anyways you might not have a perfect matching set but you can still look pretty all right all right, now getting to the expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth. This is going to be releasing on October 3rd of 2023, and it is going to be a paid expansion, which I know is a point of contention for a lot of people. Personally, for myself, the game's been in development for two years, and I know a lot of people are saying that all of the changes that they've made, as well as the additional content like Brimstone Sands, is what the game should have released like in the first place. And while I can understand that, it didn't. So they're gonna have to be able to pay the employees somehow and I know it's Amazon they have more than enough money but I don't want to take it out on the people that work there so I don't really think $30 for a new expansion that's adding in a new zone a new feature mounts as well as new equipment new weapons and a bunch of other things is really that big of a deal I will say that by making the full game combo if you've never played the game $70 that's a little bit less of an incentive for someone to maybe start playing the game especially after the bad reputation that AGS has. A lot of people are assuming that this expansion is going to release and it's just going to invite a ton of bugs into the game basically as that has unfortunately been the reputation that AGS has whenever they do release things that generally comes out extremely buggy and people find more exploits and dupes in those patches. So I do think it would have been nice if they could have reduced the price somehow for new players to buy that bundle basically, but unfortunately I'm not in charge of that. Now with this new expansion, they're going to be adding in a new old zone, which is New Light, and 
if you're a returning player or you play right now, obviously you'll know that New Light is not a new zone. They're just basically redoing the whole thing. It's been captured by the Angry Earth and it's probably where we're going to play the majority of our time in this new expansion. Some people weren't too excited about this because they didn't really understand why they wouldn't just add a completely new zone. And I'm kind of on the same page there because a lot of people were looking for additional content, not in the sense where it's something that already exists in the world, but something that we could look forward to as completely brand new area that adds on to the already made map. Probably the biggest part of this whole expansion is the addition of mounts, which a lot of people are very excited for but also a lot of people are very concerned about. The main reason being that most of the patches and updates and things that they've added previously add in a ton of bugs. And with something like mounts coming into the game, which is introducing a whole new just level of stupid shit that people can do, I'm interested to see on how they're actually going to deliver and if it's just gonna be a bug ridden mess. With the addition of mounts, there's gonna be an additional new trait skill, which is called riding, which you're able to level up, I'm assuming, as you use your mount. There's going to be horses, direwolves, and lions in the beginning, and you would assume that they're probably going to add some more later, hopefully like a pig or something. You're able to name these mounts, as well as add on equipment for these mounts, which is really cool. Looks like there's like going to be, you know, types of armor, or our favorite horse armor. But I'm pretty excited for this, because I don't personally feel like mounts are 100% needed, just because they've added so many new waypoints for you to fast travel for. But it's definitely going to make those somewhat annoying walks a little bit more enjoyable, and everybody enjoys mounts. They're also adding in a new weapon, which is going to be the flail. This is going to be a one-handed weapon that you can also use with a shield, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty decent, you know, secondary weapon for tanks and healers. I'm pretty excited for it just because I think the flail is a pretty freaking awesome weapon in general. They're increasing the max level to 65, and with this, it's going to increase the gear score to 700. They're also introducing a new tier of armor, which is going to be artifact and you're going to be unable to unlock perks for this artifact gear through an awakened quest line. So that's going to be pretty enjoyable. It's nice to add a new tier. That's going to really just <laughs> spruce things up a little bit. There are a lot of revamps that are coming in with this expansion as well. The most important being that they're getting rid of the expertise system and they're getting rid of ward, bane, and resilience. Since I didn't get to really do a whole ton of endgame content and there's not a lot really going on currently, I didn't really get to interact too much with these features, but I know that through global chat and Reddit, everyone is extremely excited about them getting rid of this because it seemed to kind of force people to farm and use equipment that might not have been the best really for their build, but since it had the best in regards to these stats and like gear score, things of that nature, they were kind of forced to use this equipment. They're updating the main storylines for Great Cleave and Eden Grove. And then they're adding an additional expedition, some more heart runes, as well as some seasonal events like our favorite Mr. Turkey. Overall, I do hope that the expansion kind of delivers in a very good state. I'm not super optimistic, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and definitely play the game when it releases. I'm interested to see if there's going to be an uptick in new players, and I hope that this kind of marks the continuation of AGS trying to improve New World for all of its players. I feel like Brimstone Sands and more importantly the release of the fresh start servers was one of the reasons why a lot of people came back back then. The numbers went back up to like a hundred, you know, fifty-ish thousand concurrent players. But unfortunately that died out pretty pretty quickly because there just really wasn't too much else to do. Lastly, just for kind of my overall review and whether or not I would recommend it to you guys, if you're the type of person that enjoys more of the PVE aspects of a lot of video games like dungeons, raid bosses, you know, world events, a lot of, you know, the resource gathering. I think I do recommend this game to you. I, I had a lot of fun doing the leveling up process. It seems like they've made leveling up your trade skills significantly easier. They added in a new type of resource to me, which were just called resources. I had never seen them before, and basically you get them as you do trade skills. So you'll go out, you know, chop down a tree, you might get this thing called Strange Resin. If you're harvesting some materials like herbs, you might get this Strange Pollen. And there's one of these resources for every single type of trade skill. And basically, they're just like a way for you to ramp up how you level up these things. I, had, I didn't put too much of an effort into, you know, doing my trade skills. And I was able to get the majority of them up to a very decent level without putting any focus on them. 
All of these resources that you get, you can use them at the workstations and you get a huge chunk of experience every single time that you get rid of them. And it's not something that's like that rare to find, honestly. I feel like they really kind of understood that there's not a lot of people that want to sit there and chop down trees for, you know, a handful of hours. I don't really think it's too bad, but the majority of people really don't enjoy it. And they made the leveling up process significantly easier. I wasn't sure if it was just, you know, maybe they reduced the total EXP that you needed to level up, but it didn't really seem like it was all that bad. The leveling up system for your character is even easier. With guides, if you wanted to follow around, you know, one of those YouTube videos that help you kind of level up to level 60, there's people that can do it in like 15 hours. It took me significantly longer than that because I was kind of being dumb and just doing random things. But if you wanted to hit level 60, you could do it in two days. Maybe maybe a week if we want to be generous for just like your average person playing games a couple hours a day. So I do think that they've made the new player experience significantly easier. And you just want to make sure that you're playing on a populated server. I'm sure that the game sucks if you're not playing with other people. And so if you want to get ahead of the curve, you know, kind of level up and understand the game a little bit better before the expansion releases, or maybe you're a returning player and you just want to start a new level one just to see what it's like, it'll be really fun and you can get all of it done before the expansion releases in a month. Now, if you're more of like a very heavy PvP player, I don't want to say that it's too terrible because there are people that are very optimistic that the PvP aspect of this game is actually turning towards the positive, but it does seem like there are PvP players that are not very happy. They seem to not focus too much on the PvP aspect of the game either. You can see this by Outpost Rush not having a new map. Since the existence in the beginning of this game, you would think that a game mode that seems pretty positively talked about would be receiving the majority of the updates for PvP, and it just doesn't seem like they're really kind of focusing on it at all. They also haven't introduced a new game mode like, you know, 5v5 arenas as opposed to 3v3 arenas, which is something that I know was requested by a lot of different players kind of all over the Reddit. So if you're looking for like a very intense PvP system, I probably would recommend waiting until the expansion comes out because that's going to add an, a bunch of just random nonsense into the game that is going to hopefully stir up the PvP aspect of the servers. And again, you want to make sure that you're playing on a populated server so that you're able to find those PvP game modes and you're not stuck in a queue for, you know, a long period of time. If you're one of the players that, you know, played it for a little bit and kind of got over it, got bored, if your reasoning for kind of not enjoying the game was because of the PvP, I don't really think too much has changed there, so I would wait for the expansion. If you're someone that just stopped playing it because maybe the server started dying or your just server died and, you know, you didn't really want to start on a new server with like a new company and all of that, I, I would recommend coming back and playing the game and seeing what the game is like. I do think that the game is fun. I do think that New World has some pretty amazing aspects of it that aren't found in a lot of other games. And I do think that if you want to wait maybe a week after the expansion releases to kind of get a general feel of what the players are thinking, that is going to be your best time to make a decision on whether or not to come back. Because if AGS keeps up with how well they did with the BGS expansion, hopefully this, you know, first expansion is just amazing and it's really everything that everyone is wanting and it's a step in the right direction. But if it's bad, trust me, you're going to know it's bad within like the first like six hours. I'm sure someone's going to be duping mounts or something. So you'll know if it's bad and you'll know if you need to just be like, okay, you know, new world's on, you know. We're going we're gonna to ignore that for another six to six months to a year. But I think you'll know pretty quickly if you want to play it or not. If you guys are enjoying this more like long forum type of video that is packed with more information because I spend a lot more time doing a lot of gameplay and just kind of figuring out what the game is about, let me know down below. I really appreciate all the support recently and I hope that this content is kind of what you're looking for. If you guys have games that you want to recommend that I go, you know, spend 100 hours in and see what it's like, let me know down below. I'll pin a comment. You guys can add in your suggestions there. And, you know, I'll maybe pick something out of that to do my next video on. Currently, my next game was going to be Old School RuneScape. I was going to see what it's like to be a new player. But if there's a suggestion that just gets, you know, a lot of updates, maybe I'll play that game either in my next video or maybe the video after that. As always, I appreciate the support, guys, and I hope to see you on the next one.